Hi everyone and welcome back to the Stitch Sessions. This week we have a new project for you. We are going to be working on this wonderful lumbar pillow and it's a great way to show you how you can use crochet for a variety of different types of projects. So of course you can do lots of wearables but you can also make many other types of accessories like pillows. So um, this is going to be fantastic because I'm going to put this in my uh, bedroom crochet nook and it's just going to be wonderful for crocheting on those wonderful Sunday afternoons. So this one is, uh, we did in a basically a tubular shape and then we created two circles to pl place on each end. It is fairly easy, although I know it looks probably a little bit more intricate because of the color changes, but you're going to be amazed and hopefully delighted at how fairly simple it is. And as long as you know your half double crochet stitch, and double crochet stitch, you should be good to go. Now, if you're unfamiliar yet with working on circular shapes, I will put a link in the description box down below on how to do circles, just a little deeper dive into that, but I do go through it with you in this tutorial. So if you're a little bit of a newer crocheter, do not fret. I will take you through it step by step. Now, if you've come across a few of my tutorials before and you are not subscribed to this channel, you should really do so um, because I upload every Wednesday a new crochet tutorial and that way you'll always stay up to date. And of course, you can also uh, check us out on Instagram and Facebook at The Stitch Sessions. And by the way, did you know that we also offer an interactive online crochet class? We do. So if you go to our website, which is crochetcrafty.com, you'll find all the information on our upcoming classes. Now, without further ado, let's get all of our materials together and let's get stitching. <laughs> Okay guys, for this project, I am using some leftover yarn from a previous project. So um, this is some of the Bernat's Home Deck yarn and uh, it's part nylon and part acrylic, I believe. And this is, I think it's called the Fair Play um, brand or the Fair Play line and it is by Premium Yarns and it's a fine um, it's a fine weight yarn it's probably a size three so for this project I am actually going to work it with these two strands held together and I'm doing this just simply because I like the um, the look and how the coloring came out and I just um, basically just like them together. So I'm not sure uh, how much is here exactly, but I'm purposely trying to go through all the yarn that I have so, th so that if I buy something new, it is a completely new project. I'm really trying to be good about using up what I have. So let's begin. Now, because this home deck yarn is a little bit thicker, I'm using a six millimeter hook for this project, also known as a J or a 10. And of course, as always, make sure that if you've got a pair of scissors on hand, along with a darning needle to sew in your ends later on. You're also going to need something to stuff your pillow with. I am actually going to be using this old mattress pad. This is a, a, an old one that I've finally replaced. So um, I'm gonna use this as my stuffing. You can certainly use polyfill that you can find at most craft stores or the craft section of Walmart. Um, but I thought instead of um, throwing this out or uh, using it for rags, which is a lot of times what I do, as I rolled it up, I realized it would create a great cushion. So uh, this is actually gonna be my stuffing so it rolls up just nicely like that and this is what I'm going to put inside my pillow once I've created the cover for it. So to make our lumbar pillow we're going to, we're going to start with one end first. So holding our two strands together we are going to start with a cinch circle. Okay and if you need a little bit of refresher on uh, the cinch circle. I'll put a link in the description box down below, but I'm going to go through it slowly with you here as well. So I've created a ring 
And now I'm just going to insert my hook to pull through. And I will chain one to secure the circle. So there you have it there. I'm just gonna take that short tail out of the way. And we are gonna use double crochets for this project. So I am gonna chain an additional two chains. One, two. Now we are going to do a double crochet into the circle. So I'll yarn over, insert, So you have something that looks like this. Now keep in mind that that chain three at the beginning will count as a double crochet. So in total, we would like to put 12 cro double crochets into this circle or into this ring. So technically I have got two already done. The chain three counts as one. I'm gonna do a double crochet into this circle 10 more times. Remember to be patient with yourself in this initial stage because this circle is pretty wonky. So just take your time and be patient. Coming up to my 12th double crochet here. Once you've got 12 into your circle, you just wanna take your tail from your magic ring and just cinch it shut. And don't be afraid to pull tightly on it so it cinches in the center of your circle. So you have something that looks like this. Now what we want to make sure we do is that we find the top of that first chain three that we did and you just have to be patient and find it. You'll insert your hook, so that's where mine is, and you'll just slip stitch to close off the first round and you've got something that looks like that. I love how these two colors work together. So this home deck is like this um, creamy, beigey color, I guess you'd call it, and this is like a coral color, which is really great. Okay, round two, we are going to chain three. And now what we wanna do is, in order to increase the size of our circle and continue to allow it to lay flat because we want it to be a flat circle to create the ends. We are now going to increase each stitch. So we are going to proceed to do another double crochet and I'm actually going to go back into the top of that chain three where I slip stitch to join and I'm going to do another double crochet. So I now have two stitches coming out of that spot. The chain three counts as one and the next double crochet. So for round two, that is what we're gonna do. We're gonna place two double crochets into each stitch all the way around. We started off with 12 in round one. The end of round two, we're going to have 24 stitches. So I'm gonna do the next one with you. So my next stitch is right here. And this first stitch can sometimes be funny because that this top loop is right here. So that's the full stitch, and you can see that V shape. So I'm gonna do one double crochet, and then I'm gonna go right back in and do a second double crochet back into that same stitch. Okay, I'll do that one more time. Double crochet, find the next stitch right there. I'm going to place one double crochet and I'm going to do one more back into that same stitch. So you can see now that the circle is increasing in size. So go ahead and do that, two double crochets into each stitch so that you have 24 stitches in total at the end of round two.
Once you've come to the end of round two, you should have 24 stitches. So to close off our round, you want to find the top of your chain three from that first stitch, and we're going to slip stitch to join. Just like that. So now you can really see the shape really taking form of your circle and it's sitting nice and flat and that's because we are increasing. We're going to go on to round three and we're going to begin by chaining three again. One, two, three. This time we're going to find the next stitch and we're going to do two double crochets into the next stitch. So you'll have two stitches within one. And now into the next stitch, we're only going to do one double crochet. So that is going to be the repeating order for this round. Into the next stitch, we'll do two double crochets. So that will be two stitches into this stitch. So remember the very first thing we did was chain three. This chain three counts as one double crochet. So you've got one double crochet, two double crochets into the next stitch, one double crochet into the next stitch, two into the next. So the pattern here, or the formula as I like to call it, is one, two, one, two. So into the next stitch, we're going to do one double crochet, and then into the following stitch, we are going to do two. And this is what you're going to do all the way around, round number three, and you should end up with 36 stitches at the end of round three. In your last stitch, you are going to be placing two double crochets. So it will feel like there is still one more stitch left here, but there isn't. It's, it's what we call sometimes a false stitch or a fake stitch. Remember your chain three counts as one. Um, so in order to close off round three, we're going to find the top of our chain three. Now I'm going to show you something else you can do if you're really feeling like this spacing is bugging you. You can do one double crochet into this space here and then instead of closing off at the top of your chain three, you would in fact skip that or ignore it and you would slip stitch into the top of the very first full stitch. So that's our chain three. This is the top of the full stitch. So you slip stitch through that and you've got a nice even join. So the chain three just kind of gets pushed to the back and completely ignored. So both techniques are work quite nicely. It's all dependent on what you like and what you would like to do. As long as at the end of round three you've got 36 stitches, you are free to do as you like. Okay, so I'm going to leave my third round just like that. We're going to go on to round four. In round four, we're going to begin the same way with chaining three. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to double crochet again back into the base of that same stitch. Okay, so I am going to go back into that same stitch and double crochet. So we're starting this round with an increase. And I personally like to alternate where I begin my increases with each round. So some people will begin each round with their increase. Um, some people do it every second round. So in the previous round, round three, I didn't start with two double crochets in the same stitch. I left the chain three on its own and then I increased into the next stitch. In this round, I'm starting with the increase 
and then doing the individual stitches after. And the reason why I like doing that is it actually helps to maintain the roundness of your circle. Uh, a lot of times when you start doing bigger and bigger circles, if you always place the increase in the exact same spot, it actually starts to create sharper corners. So you'll get things like a hexagon or an octagon shape. And we really want to try and make sure that this stays nice and round. So into the next stitch, we are now going to do one double crochet. And into the next stitch, we'll do one as well. So for round four, we are going to do two double crochets into one and then one double crochet into each of the next two stitches. We're going to do that again. I'm going to do two double crochets into this next stitch. So I'm going to do one more. And then I'm going to do one double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet into the stitch next to that one. Okay, so for round four, we will be doing two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around. At the end of round four, you should have 48 stitches. At the end, you'll slip stitch to join as usual, and you should have 48 stitches at the end of round four. So you can just put your work down and flatten it out a little bit. And don't worry if it's pulling up a little bit. Keep in mind when you're using two strands, sometimes if you're not maintaining an even tension with both strands, this can happen. So you wanna just keep a nice even uh, tension when you're working with this. So we're gonna move on to round five. So we will begin again by chaining three. And this time we're gonna go into the very next stitch and do one double crochet. Remember that the chain three counts as one double crochet. So we've got one, we've got the second one. We're gonna go into the next stitch and do another double crochet. So we now have three individual double crochets, one into each of these three stitches. Into the next stitch, we are gonna do an increase, which is two double crochets. So you just insert your hook and resolve one double crochet and then we'll do one more back into that same stitch. So for round five, our formula is now going to be one, two, three double crochets, one into each of the three stitches and two into the fourth. So we would have one, two, three individuals, double crochets. Into the fourth, you're gonna increase. One, 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 two, and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna do it again. Into the next stitch, we're gonna do one double crochet. And then a second one into the next stitch. And then we're gonna do one more into the stitch beside that. So that's three individual double crochets. And into the stitch next to that, we're gonna work our increase, which is two double crochets into that same stitch. Okay, so again, we've got one, 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 Here's our increase. You can see that there's two stitches coming out of there. One, 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 and your increase. So there will be three stitches in between each increase. At the end of round five, you should end up with 60 stitches in total. Just finishing off round five and 
you're going to find the top of your chain three and slip stitch to join. So round five is now looking like this. And we are going to do one more round before we move on to the body of our pillow. Okay, so to begin round six, you're going to chain three as usual. And then we are going to double crochet back into this same space. So we're going to start off round six right away with a, an increase. So what I did is I went right back into the base of where we slip stitch to join. We chain three. Remember that counts as one. That uh, counts as a double crochet. And I went back into that same little area where I slip stitched. So this counts as our increase. Into the next stitch, I'm going to do one double crochet. And just be very mindful of the fact that the next stitch most often is hidden right here. So it is right under here. That's one of the loops. And there you can see you've got both loops there. So we're going to double crochet into the next stitch. So in the previous round, you can see where our increase is. We had three double crochet stitches in between each increase. So there's an increase. There's one, two, three double crochets, and then an increase. In round six, we are going to do four individual double crochets between each of our increases. So we've done one. We want to do another one. That's two. Now we're going to go into the next stitch. And that is three. And we're going to do one more into the very next stitch, a fourth double crochet. So you can see we have an increase here. One, two, three, four individual double crochets. Now it's time for an increase. So into the very next stitch, we are going to place two double crochets. So right back into that same stitch, I'm going to do another double crochet. Okay, so we have increase one, two, three, four stitches on their own and then an increase. I realize it might be funny to try and see because we're using these two different colored yarns together, but I'm just going to pull this apart a little bit and hopefully that'll make it a little easier to see. So you can see where those individual stitches are and then right here is the increase. And I'm going to do that one more time with you guys. So one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. So here is one. Into the next one is two. Into the next one is three. And the fourth one into the next one. And then into the next stitch will be our increase. So we're going to place two double crochets into that stitch there. So we have one. And then we place the second one right back into that same stitch. Okay. So this is what our pattern is for round six. This is the final round of the end of our pillow. So we have an increase, one, two, three, four individual double crochets and an increase. Four, two, four, two, four, two, all the way around. At the end of round six, you should have 72 stitches. You will then need to make a second circle for the other end of your pillow. But go ahead and finish this round and I'll just meet you when we're finishing off there. Once you finish round six, you're just going to use your do your usual slip stitch to join and you are done this part of your pillow. 
So you're just going to snip your yarn and fasten off. So you will end up with six rounds for your circular portion of your pillow. So this will give you, for the particular pillow that I'm making, it will give you about seven inches in diameter. So like I explained at the beginning, I am using a mattress pad for my filling. So I'm going to use the whole thing. So that is approximately the uh, diameter of the tube shape, I guess we'll call it. So six rounds for me is good. You might only do yours with four or five rounds, depending on how thick you would like your pillow to be. So once you have your sixth round done, you've snipped off your yarn, make sure that you have 72 stitches all the way around. You need to make a second one like this. So these two round sides are for your ends. So this one would be at one end, this one would be at the other end. Um, now, some of you may think, well, why don't you just continue and then stop your increasing and work your way up? And uh, I'm just doing it this way so that both sides are uniform. And I'm going to show you in the next section when we work on the body how I'm going to create a little bit of a ridge around both ends. And that's why I have opted to make the ends completely separate. So having said that, go ahead and make your second side, your second round end, and then we are going to jump into making the body. So I finished my two sides and my work looks like this. So these are going to sit side by side and then we're now going to create the body. The only thing is I have now run out of the uh, Burnett Home Deck yarn, which um, to a certain degree I'm happy about because I wanted to use it up. But uh, I'm in the middle of the darn project and I thought, man, I'm going to have to actually succumbed to buying a whole new ball of yarn and I really didn't want to because they come in 250 gram balls and I thought what other project am I going to do with it uh, the surprise I found though when I went to the craft store is that I have a funny feeling uh, Bernat is discontinuing this particular line because most of them are all on clearance and they no longer have this color available. So that usually tells me when something goes on clearance, usually that tells me they're discontinuing that line. Um, I'm assuming they've, they're revamping it, making something uh, in the same vein, but just a different type. So I'm not too worried about it, but I was trying to find something that was comparable to this to make for the body. And, um, and that is one of the reasons why I wasn't worried about it because at least my two ends will be from the same material. I still have a bunch of my thinner yarn left, so I'm still going to continue using that. So what I found is I found this soft and shiny yarn, uh, from Loops and Threads and it has a, I mean, not an exact similarity in color, but it blends well enough that I thought it would make for interesting uh, texture in this pillow. So that way the body would have a little bit more of a yarn feel and the ends could be just used um, to sit. The ends would just have their own texture. So we are going to give this a go. And this color is... Oh, funny. It's called white, but it definitely doesn't look white. It, it looks much more creamier. I'm not sure if it's coming across on camera. Um, it's called white, and uh, there is 170 grams in this ball, 311 yards or 285 meters. Let's see if um, I'm going to go through this whole ball. I, I have a funny feeling I'm yet again going to have leftover yarn, but good news is that I already have um, a couple of ideas swimming around on what I can use, uh, whatever leftover yarn I have for this project, so stay tuned. In the meantime, let's move on to our body, and I'm going to show you how we're going to create a really cool ridge around um, the side of our pillow. So let's get going. Okay. 
So the reason why I made my sides, the two sides completely separate is for this reason. So we're gonna start off with a slip knot, making sure to treat these two yarns as one. Okay, and now I'm going to actually take this side and turn it so that the wrong side is facing up. So this will essentially become the inside of our pillow. Okay, so I'm gonna start just about here. Okay, so you're gonna insert your hook somewhere along the edge of your pillow, anywhere you want, you can start. There's just a twist here. Usually we would be looking for a stitch to insert into, but I am actually going to insert in between the posts of these stitches and come around like this. So this is a front post technique where we push the post towards us. So yes, I, I remember that I did tell you guys that this is the wrong side of the work, but this is the effect we're going for. So that's what we're gonna do. You're going to, I'm gonna, sorry, I'll just do that again. You're gonna insert your hook in between the posts of that double crochet and then bring it around the other side of that post so that the post is pushed forward. Once you've done that, we're gonna do a slip stitch to secure our work here. So you'll pull that through and then continue to pull it through your loop. Now you've secured your work to the post. Okay, I'll just put that tail towards the inside. We are going to now work with half double crochets. So I'm going to chain one and around that same post, I'm going to do a half double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, go back in and around this post, you'll yarn over again, pull through so that you've got your three loops. Remember these two yarns are being used as one. Yarn over and then pull through all three loops. Okay, so you've got a half double crochet that you've worked around the post. This is what we are going to do all the way around for the first round of our body. Okay, so I'm just going to push this tail aside. So again, I'm going, well, I'm going to yarn over first because we're doing a half double crochet. I'm going to insert my hook in between so that I can move around and behind that post. Sorry, that short tail is in the way. And then I'm gonna yarn over, pulling it through. Not too tight, remember, you wanna be able to get your loops through. Then we'll yarn over and pull through all of the loops. Okay, I'm just gonna keep my tail out of the way. And I'm gonna do that again, yarn over and into the next post beside it. Pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. I'm gonna do that again, yarn over, insert between the stitches to push that post forward, yarn over, pull through, three loops will be on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Okay, so might be hard to see what's happening here um, because we've got the two colors. I'm gonna do one more and then I'm gonna explain what we're going for here. So pushing that post forward, pull through, yarn over and pull through all three. So I'm just gonna pull that out. What happens here when we do that? I'm gonna turn my work around. So now you can see the stitches are being formed here. If I show it to you from the side, you should be able to see that there's a little ridge being formed here. And that's exactly the effect we want to have. So as we work our body up, we'll have like a little lip that will stick out, which is going to create a 
uh, ridge or a trim around the side of our pillow. Now it's hard to see still yet because it's early, early days yet. As your project grows, this is going to become more and more prominent. So for the first round, all the way around, we're going to work in between, or we're going to work all of the posts, we'll say. Okay. So I'm sorry, guys, I just realized that um, the contrasting yarn might be a little bit confusing. But don't worry about looking at it from this side just yet. As long as you work your stitches steadily from this side, when we get to the end of round one, then we'll, we'll kind of go over it again. So I'm going to do this one more time, and then I'm going to set you loose to finish your round. And then we're going to talk about round two and all the other progressive rounds after that. So you yarn over. So you should be able to see that that one's been worked. I insert between the posts to push this post forward. Yarn over. Pull through. Yarn over and pull through all three. Okay? So half double crochet into or around every single post, all the way around. This is also known as the front post half double crochet. So anytime you're working around posts, you're gonna hear that description being used. Okay guys, so I will see you shortly. Okay, I'm just coming up to my last couple of posts here. So I'm just pulling through, and I've got one more right there. And so I'm just going to insert around. And now I'm ready to finish off my row. Now I did go and do a stitch count. I still have my 72 stitches, so I know I'm correct. Uh, we are no longer going to do any more increasing, so if you did the six rounds just like I did, you should still have 72 stitches in total, okay? So now what we want to do is we want to slip stitch into that first one, that first stitch we had. This one is a bit thick because we, uh, we chained and then we stitched back into the same one, so... There we go, I've got my stitches. So I'm just gonna slip stitch to join this round. And you can, actually first I'll show you what this looks like. So see, now it's starting to curl a bit because we are no longer increasing the stitches, which is quite normal. So this part is the inside because it's the back side. It's gonna be the inside of my pillow. So now you can really see the ridge effect it's creating. Okay, so from here on out, until you get the length that you desire, this is what we're going to do, is we're going to do one half double crochet into each and every single stitch. We're no longer going to work into the posts. That was just to create this ridge here. Okay, so we're going to keep going until we get the length that we want. Now, uh, you can slip stitch to join at the end of every single round, or you can work in the spiral round, just keep going um, without slip stitching. So instead of coming here and slip stitching, I would have just continued on. I would have just continued on and half double crocheted into the very next stitch and then continued on from there. Um, I'm going to see how I feel. The only thing is you have to make sure to use a stitch marker unless you're super great at keeping count of your stitches. Um, I think I may still use the slip stitch method. I'm going to see how I like the look of it. And, uh, but other than that, they both, both methods are, work fantastic and great. Um, so I'm just going to take you to the beginning of round two of your body. I'm just going to chain one. It's funny because I had said that this yarn is very creamy, but now that I've put it next to this cream colored, um, home deck yarn, it definitely does look much more white uh, against that, so it's funny. Um, okay, I digress. We are going to do a half double crochet right back into where we just did our chain one. And I like doing that in projects sometimes because it just gives me a more fortified stitch here. Okay, 
And now we are going to work into all of the stitches. So you'll yarn over and just insert right away into the stitch. We're no longer working into the posts. We're just going into each and every single stitch all the way around. And I will still have 72 stitches at the end of each round. And there is no increasing, as I said before, so your stitch count should remain the same. Okay. So my dears, go ahead and do that. And I will meet back up with you once you've created your desired length for your pillow. And then we are going to discuss how we're going to attach the top part of our pillow to our project. And of course, then put the stuffing in. But we've got work to do in the meantime. So continue on with your half double crochets. I'll meet you at the end of the body of our pillow. And here we are, our lumbar pillow here. So I've got the length that I am very happy with and I've actually tested it out and put my filling, so to speak, in here. So I also did a little bit of a, um, uh, just playing around with the design. So. I still have a little bit of this coral color left. So I kept them two together and then I just went to that uh, creamy white color that I have and then I just tried to add a little bit of, uh, just a little point of interest there. So now I'm coming up to the end. So what I'm gonna do, because now we've gotta take the other end of the pillow and now fasten it together. And what I want to make sure that I do is that I make it look fairly uniform and very similar to the way this end came out. So you see how with the front post um, stitching, it does indeed create that ridge I was talking about earlier. So I am actually now going to fasten off here and then we're going to come back to here and I'm going to show you what we're going to do to now attach this end and complete our pillow in a very nice uniform way. I'm very happy the way it turned out actually. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, working this uh, part separately, is exactly what we did when we began the other side. So we want to work around of the uh, around the posts of the first row here, and then we're gonna attach it to our pillow. So just like the other one, we're going to start with a slip knot and we are going to make sure that the inside or the wrong side of our work is facing upward and we're just going to find a spot anywhere and in between the stitches we want to push one of these posts forward and we will slip stitch to join. So remember we're not working into the stitch, that's the top, we're working around the posts right here. So then pull through and there we go. So now we're in. So what we'll do now is we will chain one, oops, it's a thing about working with two yarns. So we'll chain one and then we're going to half double crochet around this same post just to make sure that it's this stitch is nice and clear and we're not going to worry too much about this tail because it's going to go on the inside of our work anyway. Okay so there we have it. We've done a half double crochet and that's what we're going to do all the way around all of these posts. So now we go into the very next space beside the one we've just worked. So we will yarn over, go around the next post. So push it forward, yarn over to pull through, three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Okay, so again, half double crochet, and we just go around each and every single post all the way around. And we just want to do one row of this. Um, and what we're trying to do is just create uniformity um, on 
the front side of the work and create that same ridge effect that we had on the other side. So that's what we're going to do all the way around. And then we will slip stitch to join. And then we will sew our end to the top of our pillow. Okay, so we've got our pillow body, we'll call it, stuffed, ready to go. The end is done. So now we've just finished doing the other end that we were talking about earlier. So we've done all the front post stitching, just like we did on the other side. Oh, yeah, that is the inside there. So now what I want to do is... We are now going to take this end and we are going to sew it to this one. Now, I did think about slip stitching it, but it would just show an extra ridge. So I'm going to try and do a little, um, I think they call this the mattress stitch. And that is when we go using the inside loops um, back and forth in a zigzag fashion. I'm hoping that that will... Um, uh, create little less of an obvious join here. So I have done my slip stitch to join my round and I've left it here because I wanted to, I want to leave a really long tail to sew. So usually I just kind of do this, uh, I call it a homemade method. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll just kind of take my yarn and I'll loop it around once and just kind of trace it maybe twice and sometimes just to be sure I loop it around three times and yeah as you can see it's not an exact science but I think I should be okay I'd rather at this stage have yarn left over than not enough so there we go I've snipped that off so I'm just gonna get my darning needle here and I'm going to feed these through both of them so remember we're working with these two as one there we go okay so here we go so this is the inside so i just want to make sure my tails are pushed to the inside oh right i almost forgot about that so now with this loop what i'm going to do in fact I'm just going to feed that through there and I'm just going to tie it off just like that. I don't want to actually tie it too tightly because I don't want it to bunch up. Okay, so what I want to do, I'm just tucking this end in here, I'm going to just insert, hopefully you can see this, I'm just going to insert my darning needle right here. So these are the inside loops. So I'm just going to feed that through and eventually it should pull up my top here. Now see how my, my ends are there? That's the insides. So I got to make sure I turn that. So it's facing inward there. Okay, so the first few stitches are gonna be wonky because nothing is sitting quite properly. The other way you can do this is you can take a couple of pins and just pin them in place um, while you sew in your top, but it's not how I roll, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm pretty comfortable in just holding it as I go. So I'm just going to pinch this a little bit. Now, uh, you may, depending on what you're using to stuff your uh, pillow with, want to put more in here. Like I actually do have, it's quite roomy in here, but because I'm using my mattress pad as stuffing, I could actually stuff some more stuff on the inside here just to beef it up a little bit. Um, but I'm not going to worry about it. So yeah, you can make yours as um, firm or as soft as you like. 
So back to the sewing. So I've come up through this front loop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go now to my top, which is on this side, and I'm going to find the front loop of a stitch there. So see that? Now facing me, this is actually technically the back loop, but we're talking about the inside loop. So basically these are the loops that face each other, okay, between the top and the body. So I'm just going to insert there, feed it through, and once I pull it snug, it should hopefully somewhat disappear. Then I want to, hopefully you can see this okay, see that, whoops, I want this loop here, inside loop, and now I'm going to find this inside loop here, see that? So the two loops closest to each other, and I'm going to feed that through there. And this is basically the idea to go all the way around. And so now you can really see, just a little bit snug, not too tight, if it's going to blend okay. So right now it's a whole bunch of colors, so we can't quite see just yet. But I'm going to go into the next one here. So that inside loop, and I'm going to connect it with that one. Remember, we should have the same number of stitches going around. It's the body and the top should have the same. So I'm just gently pulling that in. So the cool thing about using with these two different colors is that when they're snuggled in, it's not too obvious that there is a seam, or at least it helps camouflage it. So let's do a few more, and then I will set you loose. So again, the loop that's closest to the inside, and then the loop that's closest here. And in fact, it just dawned on me, I'm kind of doing this not the way I intended. So when I said I was using the mattress stitch, I've actually been using the whip stitch because I've been going in the same direction. If I was doing it properly, which I'm going to do now, actually, good thing you can hardly tell there, is now I'm gonna go from the front to the back Part. Then you go from the back to the front. So now I'm going to find the inside loop on the front and I'm going to feed it into the inside loop of the back. So I hope you can see that there. So I'll feed that through. And that is a much better way to camouflage your stitching. Yeah. So then it, now that I've gone out the back, I'm going to go to the next inside loop from the back which is right there. I'm going to match it up with the inside loop in the front and then pull it through. So some people call this the zigzag stitch, some people call it the mattress stitch. There we go. So when we snuggle it tight this will actually be a great way to somewhat camouflage the fact that we've had to sew in your top. Okay? So I am going to set you loose. Remember that you are always meeting up the inside loops that face each other and you're feeding your yarn through there. Back and forth, forth and back, so to speak. All right, so I'm going to let you do that all the way around and then I'll meet you when we are ready to seal the deal. All right, we're finally finished. So I'm pretty happy with how the stitching came out here. It's uh, a little bit noticeable, but again, once you set it down like that, you can't really tell. I'm so excited that this came out um, as well as it did. So I ended up um, stuffing it a little bit more. I had an old uh, towel. As you know, I talk a lot about how I keep old t-shirts, towels, socks. I don't ever throw any of it away or give any of it away because I always know that I'm going to use it most likely for some stuffed uh, items. So, so happy with how this lumbar pillow came out. So I just did the final stitching here. And what I wanted to show you guys is that, um, let me just zoom in here. There we go. So I just wanted to show you guys that I just 
hid, I've been hiding the, um, the last little long tail here and I just wanted to do a few more inserts and I'm just trying to kind of keep in line with the fact that these are two different colors so I can get away with hiding it a little bit easier into, there we go. So hopefully you can see that. And now what I want to do is I just want to kind of go in and out a wee bit, not too much, and just kind of, so I've already knotted it, but I just want to give it a little extra something and um, just so that it has some fortification on the closure. Now, I'm just going to do one more on this side. Again, I don't want to do too many because it just don't want to distract from the closed seaming. So I'm going to do one more here. There we go. And I think then I'm going to just knot it. So now you can come up with whatever knotting system that's comfortable for you. All I know is I just like to make sure that I feel like it's not going to come undone. And I have to really be careful here because this one looks like it's gonna, and then I would just weave it under there. So all this does is just kind of sits in there nice and easy and secure. And once I feel confident that I've woven it back and forth enough times, I'm just going to snip that yarn. And then I'm just going to take a smaller hook and I'm going to feed this through. Oops. And I'm just going to pull it in to hide it in there. There we go. Oops. And just be careful not to snag any of the other loops and whoops, it really wants to come out. And there you have it. There we go, guys. What a fun little project and a great way to upcycle some of your old material. So, fabulous lumbar pillow. This one is really nice and fortified. I am actually going to put this in my uh, bedroom crochet nook. And some of you know that recently I had done a balcony crochet nook makeover. I also made over my bedroom because I wanted to create a great little crochet nook for them. So stay tuned for that video. That's coming up. In the meantime, guys, I hope that you have enjoyed working on this project with me. I love having you guys come along and make sure if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I don't want you guys to miss out on any of our uploads. I upload a tutorial every week on Wednesdays and sometimes it's a tutorial, sometimes it's a stitch session conversation with a fellow artist. Most of the time just a bunch of my friends hanging out and talking things life related, crochet, creativity related, all kinds of interesting things. Sometimes people like to um, sit along with their work in progress and hang out with me. I know I love to watch some live streams sometimes of other people's crochet parties. So um, hopefully you enjoy hanging out with us as well. So in the meantime, guys, have an amazing day. Happy crocheting as always, and take good care. Bye.